It is early January and it is time to prune some apple trees. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you on a early cold morning in January of 2022. So we've actually been in this area before. In fact, I'll try to find some footage for you guys of last pruning season on these newly planted apple trees. And it'll give you a good idea of the kind of growth that we've seen in what amounts to 15 months since these were first put into the ground. Now, it was just under a year ago, we were here pruning these trees back to single whips, so just a single trunk, and they've grown to what you see here in the last year. So let's actually get a close-up shot of one of these trees. I believe this is the very first apple tree that we pruned last year. Now, this tree, as far as I recall, was about two to three feet tall, we had cut it back to a single whip, and that whip was about the size of my pinky finger. Now today, one year later, you can see how much growth this has put on. Now this is a golden dorset apple tree that we got from Reed at RSI Growers. You guys know we're a big fan of his trees, especially when it comes to stone and palm fruit and palm fruit would be what we're talking about today. So of course, January means pruning season for us here in Arizona. We really try to go in order of the trees that break dormancy first, so we prune them first. You guys also probably know, and you'll see on the ground here, the leaves from these trees. In fact, I'll go ahead and link the video here where we show you how we remove and why we remove the leaves from the trees here. One of those reasons, of course, is to make sure that we're making good pruning cuts here at this time of year. Now, as far as when all of our trees break dormancy, our peach trees are typically the first trees to break dormancy. We already have all of those pruned. Typically our apple trees, at least our summer fruiting apple trees, are the second to break dormancy. So we're gonna go ahead and prune those today. Now these can break dormancy as early as the end of January. We've seen that happen. Typically it's the beginning of February or so. So we only have a few more weeks before these are ready to start sprouting. So we definitely need to get some pruning done. So let's look at the tools we're gonna need in order to get this accomplished today. First would be safety. You'll see I'm wearing gloves. One of the things when it comes to gloves, I use these MaxiFlex gloves. I like the way these fit. They have a tendency to fit nice and snug makes it so that I'm still very dexterous with my fingers. Next thing would be eyewear. Um, we're gonna be working with small branches today that have a tendency to whip around. We have been hit in the eye before when working on pruning our trees. The majority of the small cuts will be done with my Corona pruners. I've actually got a new pair. I was lucky enough to snag here over the last week, but I've still got my old pair that's lasted several years. So definitely a workhorse for us, especially this time of year. So next thing you're gonna want is a set of loppers. So these are bypass loppers. I actually have two different ones here. These finally starting to wear out here over a couple of seasons. Got a new one on the way. And I'm also testing out these Corona loppers here. This is the FL 3460. I actually got these from work, but I believe you can find these on Amazon. I'll link them in our shop if I can. What I like about these, we've tried them out a couple times. It's got a compound action to the head itself. It's very easy to make the cut, so you'll probably see me using these today. Now I should mention these are bypass loppers and the Corona pruners are bypass pruners. And basically what that means is the cutter here. So this piece here that actually cuts, actually actually bypasses this anvil down here. So instead of smashing against it, it goes past it. So that's why it's called bypass. And I found that that just makes a much, much cleaner cut, which is very important when it comes to taking care of the pruning cuts that you make on your fruit trees. Last but not least is gonna be a saw. 
I will be doing some larger branches today, so a nice sharp saw is a good option. This is a Corona folding saw. This one works really, really well, and you're probably seeing some consistency here when it comes to my tools. I do really like the Corona tools, especially during pruning season. Now, you have a couple different options when it comes to how you prune your apple trees. We'll get into more detail here in a second, but I wanna talk about the overall shape. This will be the first time we're gonna be establishing the the primary structures of this tree. We are gonna be utilizing an open center design on these apple trees here, at least our summer apple trees. That simply means it's an open area in the middle, kind of like a vase or bowl design. Very common for production trees like this. It will allow for even fruit ripening on the inside of the tree as well as the outside. These fruit do have a tendency to ripen very rapidly about the same period of time. So we wanna make sure as we're doing all of our harvesting that we have nice ripe fruit all the way around the tree. First thing I'm gonna to need to do is take a peek at the tree, get an idea of how this tree is gonna look and start choosing my scaffolding branches. So first thing we wanted to determine is where our scaffolding branches are. This will be the first year that we're creating the main scaffolding on the tree. We wanna to try to keep that as balanced as we can. Now, ideally we would have north, south, east, and west, but looking at this tree here, we really don't have that, which is okay. We just wanna make sure that we have even spacing between these scaffolds. So we've determined that we're going to be keeping this branch here because this branch, after we're done pruning, is gonna basically face what amounts to southeast, on the tree. We have another nice scaffolding branch that's been created here that's gonna basically face southwest and westerly on this side here. We have a small branch here that actually is just pointing well, almost pointing perfectly north on the tree. And then we have another one on this back side that'll fill in the spacing fairly evenly and it is facing essentially northeast, which means my first cut is gonna be making our open center. So for those of you who have a hard time with seeing a tree be cut way back real hard, close your eyes. So now typically we talk a little bit about the fact that you need to make sure you're taking no more than about 30% of the total branching from a tree. Now you can see our trees here grow very, very aggressively. And this is the first year that we're starting to establish the structure of the tree. So I will be going over that for sure uh, here. And that's mainly because I know we are gonna continue to have this very, very strong growth with these trees. But uh, that still kind of hurts my heart just a little bit. <laughs> now you can see what this open center is gonna look like. We do try to keep the lower branching, just that, lower to the ground as best we can. Now we do have the issue of dealing with rabbit pressure here, so it can't be too low to the ground. However, this tree is gonna to continue to grow exponentially so over the next couple of years. So we wanna make sure that we're keeping the height of the tree down as best we can. Even with this low cut here, I can tell you from experience, this tree is gonna be easily 12 to 15 feet tall, nice and wide and very reachable as far as the fruit production is concerned. Now what we need to do is get back to just our main scaffolding branches and talk a little bit more about some of these cuts. So all of our branching that is below our main scaffolds, we have a scaffold branch here. I have another one on the back side that I'm gonna go ahead and remove because it's not a scaffold branch. I have another one on the back side here, gonna do the exact same thing. I have two more larger branches here that I'm gonna go ahead and remove that are not part of our scaffolding. So one of the things I like to point out whenever I'm making these pruning cuts is where you make the actual cut, especially when you're dealing with the trunk of the tree, you wanna make sure that you're gonna be getting the trunk as clean as you can once these have healed over as the years go on, especially with things like apple trees where you have kind of a smooth trunk. I just prefer the look of a nice clean trunk on these. It's very important when you're making this cut that you're dealing with the branching just beyond the collar. Now I cut this one a little bit closer than I typically would, but you have the branch that comes out here. It's usually pretty easy to see on some of the smaller branches where the collar ends. That's basically where 
the you have the trunk of the tree here it starts to get kind of thick here and then narrows down into the branch itself you want to cut just past the collar what happens when you have these heal over is they're going to die back somewhat we don't want that dying back into the trunk it'll create basically a divot in the trunk not that it's that critical for us here in arizona but it could be depending on where you're at if you have a tendency to get some type of disease uh, or something else you don't want that in the trunk so you want to make sure you're making a nice clean cut and then you will have die back so if you want that to have just a nice clean finish cutting just shy of the collar uh, will make a difference on how it heals over. Next thing we want to look at is any of our branching that is crossing. Remember, these branches are small now. Every single one of these turns into the size of a trunk as this tree continues to get older, hence the spacing for all of your scaffolding branches. But I am going to be taking off a few branches that I know would be growing into each other this year, which we don't want to do, especially with trees like apples, where you have a softer or thinner uh, skin, basically on the branches, you want to make sure that that doesn't get rubbed off. Another thing we're looking at with this tree, remember we want an open center. You can see I'm standing in it now. Any branches that we have that are going into the center of the tree come off. I have another branch here that would be crossing over into this side. Okay, last, uh, major cut that I'm going to make on this tree. You can see I have my scaffold branches here that are fairly evenly spaced. Again, giving these branches the ability to get nice and wide. Now what I'm going to do is bring the height down just a little bit. So this particular branch, that's my scaffold branch, that's basically heading southwest. I have this other branch that's kind of going to be a little wonky and you can see it's very vertical, um, which I don't want. I want these trees nice and wide. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one off. Okay, so this is gonna be the end of the uh, pruning for this particular tree. I should point out and make really clear, this is a very aggressive growing tree. <laughs> We've done a lot of aggressive pruning on this tree, and we also are not concerned about fruit set this year. This is designed to give or establish the structure of the tree, the primary structure. Remember, this tree is only 15 months old. We do not let our fruit trees fruit until really the second year. Being only a year old, we're not looking for fruit production. So typically I would not be pruning it quite this heavy. Um, however, with a young tree like this, we will. Now a couple things to keep in mind for trees that are a little bit older. We have spurs that are starting to develop here on these larger branches. I also have some that cut, I cut off with some of the larger branching. This is where fruit's gonna develop. So as we get further into the pruning and the age of this tree, we'll start to pay a lot more attention to maintaining each one of these spurs because that's where your fruit is. But again, for this year, we're establishing the open center, establishing the structure of the tree so that it's able to grow really, really well and eventually support a tremendous amount of fruit production. So hopefully this gave you a good idea what we do when it comes to that first hard pruning on our palm fruit, particularly our summer fruiting apples here in Arizona, establishing that open center, the scaffold branching in order to really set the tree up for future growth and heavy production. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We talk a lot about fruit trees here and how we are growing them here in the Arizona desert. Definitely would love to have you as a subscriber and share the content. If you know anybody that's into this kind of thing, it definitely helps us out here when you share it. Questions or comments, those go in the comment section down below. In our Amazon shop, we'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free, painless way to help support the channel. If you start with a link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you.